Good morning everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update. Today the 27th of February 2013. This is a specific update on Tropical Cyclone Rusty only. It does not cover any of the developments in the Coral Sea expected in a week. So for that, please join us tonight. Overnight Rusty has remained slow moving, however we can see that right now it's starting to get a little bit of a move on to the east, which is fantastic news for Port Hedland. The last few hours has moved, the system has moved 30 to 40 kilometres east. What's not good is the fact that it's also intensified uh, into a Category 4, and in the latest Bureau of Meteorology uh, outlook, or sorry, forecast slash warning, uh, they have it as a Category 4. And they, the good news once again for Port Hedland is that overall the track pushes it closer to Pardue and if anything the fact that it's now moving to the east um, at about five five or so kilometers an hour uh, is going to be a very positive outcome for Port Hedland in terms of the amount of wind expected assuming obviously that it doesn't stall again and push back to the west you can see the heaviest convective activity and the strongest winds will be on the southwestern quadrant um, and as it as it starts to push more towards the south or south-southeast it is likely to make a crossing very close to or over the top of Pardue. Um, at this stage most of the guidance has a crossing between Port Hedland and Mandora. Some of the guidance continues to push this east for an extended period of time before pushing it more to the south uh, but most of the guidance is really starting to hone in on that Pardue area so that's the that's the real hot spot to watch. Look that's not saying that Port Hedland won't cop strong winds and possibly stronger winds as the day goes on but at this point in time the very destructive core of tropical cyclone and I, I do stress at this point in time the very destructive core of severe tropical cyclone rusty is at this point in time likely to miss Port Hedland but Pardue not real good news for them as always I do caution you these are our thoughts these are not the Bureau of Meteorology's thoughts so please obviously for life-threatening commercial decisions you are on red alert in Port Hedland you will need to adhere to that red alert but what I'm saying to you is that lately the the particularly the last three hours or so of movement is extremely positive for Port Hedland residents if we look at the la very latest GFS strike probabilities at the moment we can see that the cyclone is expected to push more towards Pardu than it is towards Port Hedland. There is still an outside chance of the cyclone hitting Port Hedland directly but it is now becoming an outside chance. It's not becoming the expected norm. The expected norm now is for a direct crossing near Pardu, uh, Pardu Station perhaps or Pardu Roadhouse in that vicinity. Uh, so extremely good guidance now that suggests the the, the area that we're looking at is now uh, limited to sort of east of Port Hedland but look the fact that it's that close to the coast you really need to be remaining uh, indoors in Port Hedland and be aware that the system may still because it's still not under the guidance of anything strong it may still stall and then come back a little bit to the west but overall the guidance does not suggest that will happen and furthermore if we look at the overall ensemble modeling we can see that really Port Hedland is about as far west as the system will is likely to track most of the most of the model guidance pushes the system in this southeast direction direct crossing over Pardue station of the eye um, but as I say Port Hedland all the way through to Wallal is where we're thinking but at this point once again bullseyeing Pardue look that is extremely good news for uh, if you remember Tropical Cyclone Lure a smaller system Port Hedland sort of got gale force winds but nothing more this one's a bit larger so you might still see some destructive wind gusts but at this point in time as I say I, I do stress this at this point in time we expect that the very destructive core will pass fairly well to the east of Port Hedland but just remember we are not an official authority on this we are simply giving you what the model guidance is telling us right now the UK Met model looking at this the UK Met model is number two in the world we can see that even the UK Met model really as far west as it goes is Port Hedland but overall once again Pardu station is right in the thick of it in terms of this model as well so at this stage folks there's nothing to doubt that these models are right because as I showed you on radar the system is starting to move towards the east a little bit further away from Port Hedland the eye is tightening up as I say has been upgraded now to a category 4 a very severe system uh, the upper trough that is expected to capture this system uh, at least 
expected to amplify um, to be able to capture the system for at least a short period of time is now doing that and we are going to see a southward or south southeast movement from uh, from this particular location so at this point in time we're seeing a slow easterly drift after that we're expecting this south southeast movement um, to occur which is great news once again for Port Hedland definitely won't be seeing a, a yellow alert for anywhere sort of Caratha westwards at this point in time not with the track model forecast that we have so it's all systems go in K-Town uh, and anywhere west of that so Barrow Island no problems you might see some gusty winds and some showers. Uh, let's have a look at what the model guidance says in depth from the European. Okay, so in the European model here, uh, we're going to really hone in now because we're getting close to landfall. We really need to hone in on the system centre and we're looking at the system about 940 hectopascals, uh, which is around about what the Bureau has it at 8am this morning. This is courtesy of Weather Underground, great website to have a look at this model data from. Um, and as we head towards at 11 p.m. 11 a.m., we can see a slow southward drift, but then bang, a, a shift to the southeast, which is fantastic once again for Port Hedland. You can see here, even missing out on most of the heavy extreme rainfall um, that, that's associated with this system. Uh, Pardu, not so lucky as we head towards uh, 4, 5 p.m. Sorry, uh, 5 p.m. WA time, so I keep getting my time frames mixed up because we're here on the eastern states. 5 p.m. WA time, we see a category, uh, probably a category, high-end category 4 or 5 cyclone uh, making landfall very close to Pardu Station um, right here. As we look at the Euro, we can see this is the centre of the system. You can see Port Hedland out of the picture here, so over 80 or 100 kilometres away from the actual centre of the system by the time it makes landfall. That's fantastic news once again, as I say, for Port Hedland. Uh, couldn't, be, couldn't be any better this morning uh, when you wake up. This is uh, now going right over the top of Pardu Roadhouse, Pardu Station in that region. Um, and as we see, it then continues to move inland. So once it gets, once it starts to move south-southeast, we expect it to move south-southeast uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, but as I say, the, the system has certainly drifted a little bit east, and we've seen that on radar at the start of this at the start of this broadcast. So so far, all good news. Now, when it comes to wind strengths, we'll zoom out and we'll give you a regional view of wind strengths um, all the way out to Caratha, so you've got a fair idea of what's happening. You can see here also a lot of lot of rain coming in on the northwestern northwestern banding. So this is pretty this is pretty cool to see just how far the extent is of this uh, of this rainfall especially to the east of the system look if you're west of the system you're not going to cop too much but if you're east of the system you're going to cop a fair bit of uh, fairly strong northwesterly winds and there's we've had a lot of reports overnight from Broome that it's still blowing a lot over there um, and now that most of that is these gales you can see here these gale force winds coming in on the northwesterly monsoon wrapping around this circulation now, before we do that, let's have a look at what the wind strengths are going to be like, particularly for those of you living in Port Hedland. You can see Caratha here just to the just to the on the western edge. So these are your wind strengths in knots. These are sustained wind speeds expected. So you can see gale force winds expected over over Port Hedland. South Hedland a bit less so, uh, or a bit weaker. Uh, but let's have a look at how it pushes in at 11 a.m., 1 p.m. You can see that because the system takes that south southeast track or southeast track and heads over to Pardu, it really doesn't get too much worse than what it's got. Um, and if we continue to track the system through, you can see here Port Hedland missing out on the very destructive core. But Jesus, it's not good news at all for Pardu uh, taking that track. And we've got we've got friends there that uh, that allowed us to stay during Tropical Cyclone Lua. They had a near miss last year. This one looks very 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 tight. Um, if yeah, it's just not looking good for Pardu Station or Pardu Roadhouse at the moment, uh, based on the latest model guidance. We can see the other good thing about about this is that overall the storm surge nowhere near as uh, as big a threat, especially with the system now very likely to cross east of Port Hedland. Uh, the storm surge threat has been minimised. Remember, for a storm surge to really take grip, we need to see these north. Uh, northerly winds coming in off the ocean um, over Port Hedland we've got southerly winds off the land so it doesn't allow the water to drive up um, and and inundate on the on the way in uh, as the cyclone comes in on the way in I should say 
All right, so that's positive news once again all round for Port Hedland. Look, you are still on red alert. We aren't qualified meteorologists, so you do need to listen to the Bureau of Meteorology uh, for all the latest advices um, as this system comes towards landfall this afternoon or evening WA time. But as I say, at this point in time, we are looking at the system really affecting Pardue more so than Port Hedland based on every single bit of a mod... mod available model guidance is telling us the same type of thing that this system will hit east of Headland and possibly well east of Headland which means that Headland might miss out or probably will miss out on the extremely destructive very destructive core of the system but look do not rule out a an intensification to a very very high end category 4 just before it hits the area between Headland and Pardue um, the system is really tightening up on satellite and on radar and we do expect that the system will continue to intensify now all the way through to landfall. Extremely good news today, folks, if you are in Headland, but please do not take it for gospel. That's only, we're only going on latest guidance and we're only going on current conditions. And current conditions say the system is moving east and model guidance is very unanimous in saying the system will either move south or southeast from where it is. So if that's the case, things probably will not get as bad as we first feared in Port Hedland, but they will probably get worse in Pardue than we first feared. All right, thanks very much for watching, and we'll keep you up to date through the day through our Facebook. If you have our iPhone app or our Android app available on both stores, um, we'll keep you, you'll be able to keep up to date very, very easily on our Facebook feed. Uh, but if you, if you don't have that, please continue checking our Facebook feed. We'll have updates every couple of hours through the day today all the way through to landfall. Just a quick look ahead at what happens after landfall. You can see the system continues to maintain a southerly track, um, weakens out pretty rapidly once it gets inland. And at this point in time, slight change in direction. Obviously, we've been talking about it being west of Newman, but with the cyclone now shifting east over the last few hours, it might actually push right over the top of Newman or just to the east, which means that overall Newman will experience less than it would have experienced had the system pushed to the west of it. You can see here most of the winds once it gets inland are on the south eastern quadrant. Uh, but look, overall very heavy rainfall, especially if you're east of the system, continuing now um, for the rest of today and possibly into tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. We'll have another update tonight on the more general tropics as well as more updates on Rusty as he makes landfall. Thank you and we'll talk to you tonight.